Hello, thank you for joining me. We are going to discuss a little further how the themes of the Temple and Atonement play into the greater Old Testament storyline. Keep in mind that the Bible is one big story. So this storyline from the Old Testament will grow into the storyline we see in the New Testament that does not change but becomes fulfilled. And of course, before we begin, uh, we want to open with prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you and I thank you again for an opportunity to speak about the truth of your word. Please, Lord, cleanse me and make me holy in your eyes so that I may receive your Holy Spirit as I speak words of wisdom today. Lord, may those who watch come to faith through hearing and understanding through faith. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings and your mercies. In your name we pray, dear Lord Jesus. Amen. Let us review some temple locations and their Old Testament storyline significance. The Garden of Eden would be a primary place where God dwelt with the first people he created, um, referenced in by Colorado Christian University 2021. Um, the ark is where Noah and his family were shut in by God and safely outlasted the flood in the Holy Bible, Genesis chapter 6 through 9. Remember, my assumption is that God had to be with them for their survival. Um, therefore, I'm sorry, God had to be with them for their survival. And the, uh, the drowned sinners <laughs> were kind of like an atonement for the sins of the world. Uh, not, not, not seriously. Um, however, God allowed Noah and his family to continue the gener generations on the earth. Um, the garden and the ark are not exactly tangible. I mean, we know the, the garden's existence is hidden from us, and scripture tells us that the, the garden is guarded by an angel in Genesis chapter 3, verse 24 of the Holy Bible, uh, English Standard Version. Although archaeology has made some fascinating discoveries that po point to what might be the buried remains of Noah's Ark um, from the Holy Land Sites.com in 2022. Is it possible that God dwelt in a boat? We surely know that Jesus traveled by boat and even walked on water. Um, Mark chapter 14 verses 23 through 26. Uh, Matthew chapter 6 verses 45 through 56 um, of the Holy Bible, English Standard Version. So I think God would have been the captain of the ark. Uh, in Genesis, we see the temple theme in its framework that would later build into other Old Testament themes like covenants and kingship. We are not there yet, but we're on our way. <laughs> Under Moses, we know that God resided in a tent in the wilderness of Sinai. Um, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 6 uh, is a very interesting reference from the Holy Bible. Uh, you can feel free to read that um, for your own research. Uh, but when Joshua later entered the promised land, he took God's tent with him and he camped on the other side of the Jordan River, as explained by HolyLandSites.com 2022. Also, as explained by Pastor Fink uh, from the Holy Land Sites videos, uh, the two locations associated with Joshua and the placement of God's temple are Gilgal and Shiloh. Shiloh is the location where Hannah, the mother of Samuel, the last judge, prayed to be blessed with a child and promised to dedicate that child to God in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 1, verses 9 through 20, more or less. We know that Samuel was the last judge before the first king. Saul was anointed king by Samuel at Gilgal 
in 1 Samuel chapter 11, see verse 15 in the Holy Bible English Standard Version. So the tabernacle had been relocated to a semi-permanent Gilgal, Gilgal by that time. However, Shiloh is the location where Joshua's army camped at before they sieged Jericho, mentioned in uh, Joshua chapters 4, 9 and chapter 10, verse 43. God allowed its destruction because of the evil of his people, as referenced in Psalm 78, 60 and Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 12 through 14 of the Holy Bible. Samuel was raised by Eli at the temple in Shiloh, and it was a key meeting place during Joshua's history, as presented by HolyLandSites.com in 2022. In the previous session, uh, we ended off with the story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal in the Holy Bible, English Standard Version, 1 Kings chapter 18 verses 20 through 40, we know, of course, that God won the bet between Elijah and the other prophets when God consumed the sacrifice on the altar with fire and even dried up the water and scorched the ground. What does it all mean, though? There's, there's a point to what God is telling the people of Israel, not only through systematic organization, but with the people that God chose to lead them and his mighty acts that were displayed. In Christopher Wright's 2019 book, The Old Testament in Seven Sentences, uh, he explains that much like John the Baptist went before Jesus, Elijah went before Elisha on page 208 of his book. Wright said that Jesus said John the Baptist was like Elijah because he called the people to repentance. And just as Elisha follows Elijah, Jesus followed John. Some of Jesus's miracles even remind people of the prophet Elisha. Jesus, of course, is the point to the biblical storyline as presented by Colorado Christian University in 2021. God uses many routes and vessels to get his point across. However, the point in the themes of the temple and atonement have a greater purpose in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, we see the sacrificial system as a covenant of works and much like the agreement that God made with Adam first not to eat from the tree and second to toil the land in Genesis chapter 2 verse 17 which was not included in the first video ah secrets um, I loved being able to reveal that secondly in Genesis chapter 3, verse 17, and supported by Paul in the book of Romans, chapter 5, verses 12 through 21 of the Holy Bible, English Standard Version. The point of what God is doing, though, is was so that he could be with his people, um, and of course still is, like he was in the garden before Adam and Eve disobeyed. God was just trying to get back to to where he used to be with his people. Hard-headed Israelites overlooked the fact that uh, God did not want their meaningless works. He wanted their love and devotion. As presented by Colorado Christian University, God wanted to live with them again and to dwell with us. Ad lib on my part. However, they could not because they could not quit sinning, so God produced a way to make ends meet in the meantime, and the point of the prophets, like Elijah and Elisha, is that they speak for God, um, as presented by Wright, 2019. Some, some people just thought they were crazy, like uh, Ezekiel. Ezekiel. <laughs> Uh, they probably think I'm crazy now, too. Um, in Ezekiel chapter 10, he pulled out his hair in protest of idolatry 
another biblical theme of the Old Testament. Um, or uh, Hosea, when he married a prostitute in uh, Hosea's chapter 1 through 3, uh, both of those, the Holy Bible, of course, God went to some extreme lengths to get their attention, but to no avail. Um, because they, the temple gets destroyed more than once, rebuilt twice, and even becomes an apostasy with worship of false gods under its roof to this very day. Um, presented by HolyLandSites.com, not exactly in those words, uh, but it is what I've gathered from hearing about the other religions that do also share co-ownership of this temple. Um, this brings me to one of my favorite points, however. When Jesus flipped the tables in the temple, um, not exactly Old Testament, I understand, but there's a point. Uh, Jesus was uh, in what we call the Temple Mount. In the Holy Bible English Standard Version, Matthew chapter 21, verses 12 through 13, and Mark chapter 11, verses 15 through 18. He, uh, the temple was originally built by Solomon as a place for God to dwell with his people, as we had mentioned from HolyLandSites.com in 2022, but how many of us have left home and when we returned, there was a party going on? Maybe not a lot of us, uh, but I would be quite upset to walk into my house and people are desecrating it. They would immediately get kicked out. <laughs> so uh, when Jesus flipped the tables, he did it because they were partying in his house. The point of the temple was for God to have a dwelling place with his people. Additionally, the point of sacrifices is that the spilling of blood would bring both a curse and forgiveness. Um, in Genesis chapter 4, verse 11, in the Holy Bible, uh, Abel, of course, spilled the blood of his brother in verse 10 and called out to God. Um, and in verse 11, God explains that basically he's cursed, the ground is a curse to him. And it is additionally supported in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, that talks about the forgiveness and restoration in, found in the blood. Um, so we have both a curse and a promise in, in the blood. Sacrifices were to be done on altars normally close to God's temple, as explained by Colorado Christian University in 2021. However, the folks in the temple were not seeking forgiveness, but instead defiling God's temple. So by the time we get to Jesus, the Jewish people have a strict regimen of Sabbaths and sacrifices. Uh, you can read about that, Mark chapter 7, verse 1 through 13, Matthew chapter 15, verses 1 through 9 in the Holy Bible, and that will also be in the words of Jesus, what you read there. But as we know now, no amount of innocent blood would ever be close enough um, to cleanse the sins of man. And this is found in the Holy Bible, um, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4. We, we all know that there is, whoo, when you're moved by the Spirit, kingship in Christ. But we, we see how God used kings to create these temples and to continue the instruction of sacrifices for the people of Israel. We, we are not yet near the sacrifice of Christ, though I would love to continue. <laughs> I'm going to have to keep us on track. The uh, agreement of sacrifices for atonement reflects the covenant theme that is carried through scripture and presented by Colorado Christian University in 2021. We started with a dwelling place and immediately fell into sacrifices. This repeated in Genesis and became more further established after the Exodus. Um, so of course in the Holy Bible we have Genesis chapters 3 and 4, 6 through 9, 12, 15, and 17. That puts us up to the Adamic, the Noamic, in the Abrahamic covenants. And when Joshua, Joshua arrives after Moses uh, in the Promised Land, a more semi-permanent dwelling was erected. But again, the 
pattern of sin and disobedience brought its destruction in Joshua uh, chapters 1, 4, and 18 and supported by the HolyLandSites.com. So we even have kings that disobey, for example, Saul and David spilled blood, much like Cain in Genesis. This blood cursed the ground in all accounts. That is uh, the Holy Bible, English Standard Version, Genesis chapter 4, 11, and 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 15, 1 Chronicles chapter 28, 8, I'm sorry, 22, chapter 22, verse 8, all the way through chapter 28, verse 3 in 1 Chronicles. The point is that God must ordain the spilling of blood, and certain criteria based on the law given to Moses in Leviticus chapters 1 through 7 of the Holy Bible. Uh, this spilling of blood and sacrificial atonement system is meant for the temporary forgiveness of sin. As well, we read in Leviticus, Thus shall he make atonement for the holy place, because of the unclean, uncleannesses of the people of Israel, and because their tra transgressions, all their sins, and so shall he do for the tent of meeting, which dwells in them in the midst of their uncleannesses. That is the Holy Bible English Standard Version, Leviticus chapter 16, verse 16. And additionally, the uh, breaking, breaking the covenant between God and his people would also cause lamentations in the Old Testament storyline. Um, and of course, the entire book Lamentations from the Holy Bible English Standard Version. I mean, if everything went perfectly all the time, there would be no need for restoration of sins. Uh, but nothing went perfectly. And God had planned it that way. We see again the logic in God's plan, as stated by Myers and Nobel from 2015. Um, it just makes sense. God made uh, several covenants with Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, and David. Um, Genesis chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 8, chapter 12, chapter 15, chapter 17 the book of Exodus, the book of Deuteronomy, and uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 7 there, you can read about David. However, it all points to the sovereignty of God, which is where we find the character of God laid out in the Old Testament storylines. God is perfect and holy and just. Um, we read about that in Isaiah uh, chapter 30, verse 18. Chapter 61, verse 8, and in Job, chapter 34, verse 12 of the Holy Bible, God cannot break his promises. Therefore, God continued to set patterns in the kingdom so that one day a perfected kingdom would be the result. Um, again, that is as presented by Colorado Christian University 2021. So I hope that we're able to kind of see that pattern now. Destruction kind of seems to be a theme in the Old Testament, but not because of any fault of God, because of the sins of Israel. We might instead call it a theme of judgment. Um, looking at 1 Samuel 21 verse 1 and Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 12, uh, then the lamentations occurred because they were so busy blaming God and everything else, the Israelites did not realize that they were the reason for their own downfall. Um, and that's presented by Colorado Christian University also, but uh, even when they begged for a king in 1 Samuel chapter 8, it, it wasn't the right thing to do. Um, Israel rejected God and wanted him to put someone else in charge. It's kind of a kick in the teeth to his sovereignty. I mean, why would they need the little guy when, you know, they had the greatest one of all to fight their battles before them? Um, of course, scripture that supports that is Exodus chapter 14, verse 14, Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 2, chapter 20, verse 4, and multiple from Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, and 54, uh, verse 17. But 
like Colorado Christian University uh, said here in 2020, I'm sorry, in 2021, Israel was a revelatory people. They were supposed to reveal God through themselves, but they did the opposite and acted more like the devil sometimes. I, I'm not judging them. I'm a sinner too. Uh, we all know Romans verse 323 uh, from the Holy Bible, but it is just clear to us who can look back in retrospect, identify the things they could not understand at the time. Their idolatry was the cause for their repeated destruction and vicariously their lamentations. Uh, idolatry is, of course, another theme as presented by Colorado Christian University 2021. However, it is because of the greatness of God that he repeatedly showed mercy on his creation. It is additionally the reason why God kept trying to establish these things so that, it, so that we could understand them through God's word and be able to receive the gift of God. This gift we receive through the faith in his son as the fulfillment of every prophecy in the past, present, and coming future. As Longman in his 2012 book, introducing the Old Testament explained, the Old Testament anticipates the gospel in the New Testament. The Old Testament storyline does not stand alone. It is part of a larger storyline. The Bible's overall storyline, as presented by Colorado Christian University 2021, the biblical themes interconnect. And to me, they're like dominoes that'll fall into place according to God's word. Thank you for watching whenever and wherever, and as always, may God bless you. Don't ever forget to give credit where credit is due.